Jonathan, why did you date when you were not ready? Okay, great question. <laughs> um, where did that go? Okay, so the reason why I'm bringing this up is someone I, I shared in my previous video that right after my divorce, I was a train wreck. I was, I had lost my quarter million dollar year job. I had, I was going through a contentious divorce. I was um, very depressed. I was drinking. I was doing cocaine. I was, I was dating as a way to self-medicate the pain that was going on in my life. And someone said, Jonathan, why would you date when you're not ready? Why would you go out there and date if you weren't capable of being in a relationship. And so I'm not the only person that has experienced what I just shared. And most pe most men and women actually date when they're not ready, when they're not capable of being in a relationship. Let me repeat that. Many people, in fact, I believe most people date when they're not ready. They might have chaos going on in their life. They might have depression going on in life. They might have a contentious divorce going on. They might have issues at work. They might have physical issues going on that makes it difficult for them to build the roots, the roots of trust to be in relationship. By the way, before I forget this, if you want to learn how to vet if someone is capable of being in a relationship, schedule a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. My area of expertise is learning you how to pre-qualify your prospect. So if you're single and looking for love and you wanna learn how to pre-qualify men, then check out the link below. Because what I'm about to share with you is something I learned the hard way and I'm hoping you don't have to learn it the hard way. But going back to why was I dating when I wasn't ready? Quite frankly, it's because I wanted connection. I wanted companionship. I wanted physical intimacy with someone. It is very common for human beings to go out in the dating realm because they want connection, they want companionship, and they want physical intimacy. But that doesn't mean that they're capable of being in relationship. I'm going to repeat that. It doesn't mean that they're capable of being in a relationship. I've met plenty of women who are, have, are actively dating, and I have clients as well who are actually not capable of being in a relationship because it's a human nature to want connection, companionship, and sex, but that doesn't mean that they're capable of going the distance. This is why it's so hugely important to learn how to vet for emotional maturity. When I do coaching, when I work with a client, I help them learn how to create their own emotional aptitude test to be able to determine if a guy is really capable of leaning in, because we all know, if you follow my work, leaning back in your feminine energy isn't going to get a guy to claim you. <laughs> uh, because that whole leaning back narrative, look, you know, you can lean back all day long and be in your feminine. You can be friendly and flirty and cooperative. But if he's not in a good place to be in a relationship, just like I wasn't in a good place to be in a relationship, it's highly unlikely that anything is going to materialize in the long run. So going back to why did I do it? That's the why. Was it fair to women? Well, quite frankly, back when I was dating, I barely caught past the first six weeks and and I would end it. I mean, that was literally as long as it went for me back then. I'd go about six weeks, okay? And that's not, I mean, quite frankly, everybody should be prepared to date for six to 12 weeks because dating is, look, it's a vetting process for both men and women alike. What I would like you ladies to do is do a better job of vetting before you actually go out with a man. Do a better job of vetting before the penis goes inside the vagina. And folks, if you're not familiar with the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman, I highly recommend reading this book so you can learn the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. I did not know the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship at that stage in my life. This is why I was bouncing against walls all the time. It didn't mean I was a bad human being. By the way, whenever I read these women say, well, why were you dating when you weren't ready? Or why do men date when they're not ready? Well, my question is why do women date when they're not ready? It's human nature to want connection. It doesn't mean they're bad people. It's just we humans want connection with one another. And now we have a portal called the internet, you know, the swipe apps, that allows us to connect with people. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you all. And 
And I want to follow up with that with another thing, because some of you asked me about my significant relationship after my divorce. And I've, I've touted her in a very positive light. We had a uh, six year on and off relationship that didn't go the distance. She, we had a very conscious uncoupling and people asked, why didn't it work out? Folks, let me just be very candid with you. If you're not, I was stuck in two phases in my life. I was stuck in my anxious attachment style, anxious attachment style, and I was reliving the Imago. I was reliving the Imago. And let me just talk about this for a moment. If you're not familiar with love attachment style, I highly recommend reading the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. Read this book to understand attachment style. I was stuck in my anxious attachment style, which meant I get very needy in relationship. So I showed up very needy in that relationship. I was suckling on the nipple of I needed her to love me so I could feel good about myself. And I was constantly needing validation and constantly needing validation. Now, why did I do this? because I was trapped in what's known as the Imago. And if you're not familiar with the work of Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt, they wrote a book called Getting the Love You Want. This explains why we choose people like our parents. Let me repeat that. We oftentimes are trying to heal a wound with our parents. So we choose someone that is reminiscent or familiar to an action of our parents. I know many of you might have daddy issues or mommy issues, and you're oftentimes choosing a partner very similar to one of your parents because we're actually trying to heal through another human being when we actually need to go to our parents and heal that stuff. This is why I highly recommend reading the book the, or doing the Hoffman process, the Hoffman process. This is a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and traumas, childhood wounds and traumas, that causes us to have negative patterns and limiting beliefs in our relationship life. And quite frankly, in my particular case, my previous relationship was kind enough for after we ended our relationship, she gifted as my birthday gift, this Hoffman process. And let me tell you something, after all was said and done, it's a four or $5,000 uh, investment. And that was her kind gift to me after we ended our relationship. And once I went to the Hoffman process, I began the healing of my pattern of my anxious attachment style and my need to try to heal my relationship with one or both of my parents. So many cases, so I'm sharing with you why it didn't work out. That quite frankly, she was a beautiful, loving person. We both needed to heal each other. I was big instrumental in her life and helping her heal. And she's now in a wonderful relationship with a great guy named David. Uh, he and I are now friends. We play golf together. And I only share this with you so you help you understand is that sometimes we meet great people but it doesn't mean we're meant to go the distance. Those great people we meet are meant to be our lessons in our lives. And when we can look at our past relationships on what we positively learned about ourselves and what we're good and we're, what was good and we're, what we're most grateful for, we have a greater chance of experiencing a healthier, happier relationship in the future. And that's where I think I'm at today. And coincidentally, after going through that experience, I was able to write my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? Does anyone own this book? <laughs> Please let me know. All right, I think it's great time to take questions now.